Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More, and behind me is my 1988.5 Lamborghini Countach. I bought it a few weeks ago. It just came to me from New Jersey about a week ago, and um, finally have some temp tags and have been able to drive it a little bit legally. And um, today I'm going to talk about how much I paid for this car. So um, this is something that I, I wasn't sure I was ever going to be able to do is purchase this car because prices have gotten so crazy. I'm going to talk about how much I paid, why I paid that much, and look at prices of these cars um, recently, which is, have been absolutely bonkers. So we'll talk about that. Um, I am outside my office, Blue Steel Real Estate, and real estate's how I'm able to afford this car. I have also have a Diablo, a few other cars, an Aston Martin, a Lotus Esprit, a couple Supras, um, and some other fun cars. But this has been my dream for decades and decades and decades, and um, really cool to actually have it happen. And although I paid a lot of money for this car, um, I don't regret it at all. And having it here in person, um, I just love it even more than I thought it would, to be honest. Even though, yes, it is a quirky car and it definitely is not for everyone. So we will show you the inside of the car, the engine, all of that stuff. I can't um, drive it too much or too fast, I should say, because the tires are 27 years old. So <laughs> I'll have to uh, get new ones there before I get too crazy with it. Um, I, do, I do have a mechanic who's very close to me, has a whole lot of cars himself, has a number of Countaches too who's um, working on getting me some tires for it now. Um, this is a 1988 and a half. I believe pretty much all 88s were 88 and a halfs. And um, this is not an anniversary model, kind of the car right before the anniversary model. It still has the side skirts, but the anniversary model had um, more slots on those vents, um, a few other things, just a little bit crazier body work. Uh, yes, that is as low as the window will roll down. That is all you've got. I can barely get my hand out of it. <laughs> um, it does have wider tires than the Diablo, but yes, they're very, very old. And they're only 15 inch rims where my Diablo has 18 inch rims. And it has the US spec bumpers. That's the black part here and the black part in front, which a lot of people take those off. And it's actually kind of rare to see one that still has it. For right now, they don't bother me that much. I thought they would. And in pictures, I never like it, but in person, the black contrast with the red is actually kind of cool, but eventually we may take them off. We'll see. And this car has a kind of a crazy story behind it too, which I'll get into later, but it used to be white. <laughs> it was not always red, although the interior is um, red and has always been red. Oh, I have stuff in there still. And the doors are actually way easier to open than my Diablo, but um, the rear visibility is way, way, way worse. I mean, it's crazy. You always see people sitting on the door sill of these to back up. And I have my Diablo and I'm like, eh, it's not that bad, right? It's a little bit tricky to see, but not that bad. After driving this car, um, it is every bit as bad as you hear. And I do literally have to sit on the sill to be able to see backing up at all. But then it makes it a little tricky because then you can't really see your mirror on that side as well. So um, it also helps to have someone else who can kind of guide you where you want to go. Um, has the rear wing, which was what a $5,000 option back in the day. Some have the wing, some don't. And some people will take that off and on too. You can take it off, kind of gives them more purist style if you don't have the wing. But um, these, are, these are cool cars and just the lines, the design of them, they're just really still isn't anything like it never has been anything like it. And with, you know, safety rules and laws and all that, you really can't ever build anything like it again, just how it is. And yes, it's also very tight. I'm 6'1", maybe a little bit taller. I feel like I was always 6'1", but recently I've measured myself when my kids were measuring themselves and I was a little taller than 6'1", so that was surprising. I don't think people usually grow, especially since I stopped growing at 13. But <laughs> um, so here is the engine. And uh, one thing you notice, it sits really high. And that's one reason why the visibility is so bad because you've got these two kind of um, bumps on the hood, not the hood, the bonnet, that stick up pretty high right in your visibility. And that's because the engine is literally <laughs> needs those to fit, but very different than Diablo. Diablo is much, um, has many, much cleaner, much smoother. You can't see all the stuff going on there or this one is just, has everything and it's really pretty intimidating um, if you were ever to work on this and didn't know what you were doing <laughs> it's like oh my god 
Um, the very early cars, the first Countach's had a periscope um, rear view mirror where the, there was a, a, a groove in the roof here and you would actually have the mirror look outside through that groove to the back. So those are very expensive cars now. Almost all of those are over a million dollars now. And um, this one is not that much, I'll give you that hint. <laughs> but it was very pricey. But I still think I got a really, really good deal even though it's got a little bit of crazy history behind it. Um, and some of that crazy history might actually add to the value or not even decrease it at least. So we'll talk about that here too. But um, yeah, love this car. I'll do some more videos just on kind of the quirkiness driving it. Um, a lot of people give them a bad rap just because they are small. They're hard to see out of, but um, boy, I just love them. They're just amazing. If you're a Lamborghini person, uh, it's hard not to love this car. And if you appreciate what it was for its time, you know, by today's standards, it's not very fast. It has 400 and some horsepower. Um, ex acceleration, you know, isn't crazy blistering. Uh, almost all sports cars will be faster zero to 60 today. But back then in the 80s, you know, it had 400 and some horsepower when a Mustang had like 190 horsepower and a Camaro maybe had 200. Um, just crazy differences in power back then and um, speed and design. You know, now you've got all these different supercars and hypercars that are pushing the edges on design and aerodynamics. And this isn't the most aerodynamic car, but as far as design goes, you know, 14 years after production, this was still the craziest car ever built. Nothing ever came close to it. I still don't think anything has come close to it design-wise as far as the looks. And um, not many people will call it beautiful, but crazy is a better word. And um, that describes me a little bit in my, <laughs> how I like things to work and go um, in business, that's for sure, in cars. So uh, amazing vehicle, but I know you guys wanna hear about how much I bought it for. And we'll take a look, look at some other prices and what the market looks like and let you know what I ended up paying for this one. All right, so how much was this car? Well, first off, we're gonna talk about what the other Countaches have been selling for lately. Now, I've kind of been actively looking for a Countach probably for at least five years. And we've seen prices, a couple in the $200,000 range that were not good cars. Um, anniversary models tend to be the cheapest out of all of them. Although that might be changing a little bit now, which is weird. Um, I don't like the anniversaries as well as some of the others, but some people do. Um, and then prices jumped quite a bit recently, a lot recently. So we'll show you um, some of that. Um, and I got, it got to a point where it's like, oh my gosh, these are gonna be million dollar cars soon. All of them are gonna be million dollar cars. If I don't buy one soon, I might not ever be able to get one. And so I've been really actively looking the last year probably. And there's one I almost bought from an auction oh, three or four months ago, and actually one of my Facebook friends ended up buying it, which is funny. Um, that one was actually cheaper than the one I bought, but it, it was a very bad marketing, horrible description of the car. It ended up being a lot nicer than um, anybody thought it was. So that person got a good deal. This one, um, I kind of found off market a little bit. And um, I'll talk about that here too. But that allowed me, I think, to get a little bit better deal. So you can see here, there's one uh, 89 anniversary right now that's got a current bid of 605,000. There's still five days left. And sometimes you'll see these bids go up 100,000 or more in the last half an hour. Sometimes they'll stay the same. You just don't know. But this is an anniversary. It has very low miles, I believe, in really good shape. Mine has 21,000 kilometers though, which is very low as well. And mine is also in very good shape. And you can see on um, this one has 10,500 kilometers less. It's a silver car, which is really rare. Red interior, which is cool like mine, but it's an anniversary. And usually anniversaries, you can see they have different seats than mine, um, sell for less. But a couple have sold for more recently. And uh, it's interesting to see what will happen with some of the other markets. So this is one car that sold for 600, or not sold, for sale for 600,000. And then we see, this is a periscope, like the one I was talking about, that had the um, roof or the rear view mirror. Oh, oh, what's going on? <laughs> there, you can kind of see it right there. Um, that's how you see out the back. And these don't have wings, they don't have the flares, they have less, the tires aren't as wide, but they made fewer of them. And these are very, very, very expensive. This one got bid to 890, or yeah, 98,000, but didn't sell. 
but it had a lot of issues. But this car had um, lots and lots and lots of issues. It was completely redone, which is nice, but it had very rusty. It had 1,200 some pictures, and it was. Uh, I think that probably was some of the reason why this didn't sell for more. And I also don't think Bring a Trailer is the best place to sell multi-million dollar cars. I think those do better at really high-end auctions or just being listed. But then here's another anniversary, which is actually from the same place I bought my car. But this is a special anniversary as well. It's white on white, which is a very um, popular color combo. And then it's a downdraft version, which means it's a European version. It still had carburetors and they're much rarer in the US. So downdraft versions tend to sell for more here. Mine is uh, fuel injected, which I think is great because it starts well and um, carbureted ones might have a little more power, but um, still, um, you don't really buy this car to drag race <laughs> or to race. Um, you know, most cars now are gonna be faster than most sports cars, but back in the day, you know, most cars, sports cars had 200 horsepower if they're lucky, while this had 400 some horsepower. It was just crazy for back then, but now, not so crazy. Here's an 88, that's like mine, this sold for 500 or no 620,000 and it's got black interior um silver wheels it said it was in good shape but i believe the issue on this i've watched these auctions like crazy in case you haven't noticed they never showed a driving video of this car and you if you buy on bat bring a trailer is what bat is you don't get to do an inspection you don't get to check it out first like once you buy it you're pending you're under contract to buy it you lose a lot of money if you don't end up um purchasing it. So they had lots of pictures and receipts and stuff. But if I remember right, they had no driving videos or even starting videos and people were concerned there was something majorly wrong with it. Another one, this one was crazy too, 7,000 kilometers. So it's way low miles, 87. So similar to mine, but it doesn't have the vent, like the slots right here, but it still has those. I also don't, didn't like those in pictures, these vents here, but now I kind of like it in person. So I don't know, we'll see. But this is a fantastic car. The marketing was amazing. They started it, they drove it, they showed everything. And um, the tan interior, which is nice. I, I would either want tan, white, or red interior. I don't like the black interior. You can be picky when you're paying this much for a car. Well, kind of, because there aren't that many for sale, so it's hard to, uh, hard to find them. But there's basically, they made it less than 2,000 Countaches over 17 years. So there's not very many of them, but that sold for 860, which was crazy. Um, here's a white one, 88 like mine, that sold for 511. This crazy um, wing here was um, put on so it would pass US crash tests, and if it didn't have the front bumper, an importer figured out how to put that bumper on to let it pass um, DOT crash test requirements it's white on white on white really cool com color combination it sold for 510 but it's a can can uh, a canada car canadian so you'd have to import this to the u.s if you want it here and that can be a process and not cheap either so that one probably would have sold for a lot more if it was in the u.s um, we've got another one that sold for 350 that was an anniversary and that was um close a year ago now and like I said, prices have jumped um, and we go farther back. Year and a half, there's a 452 price, 323, um, 425. I, I honestly think these would all be double now in price. 194, um, this is the same car that sold recently, that's funny, um, to my friend on Facebook. And the one I was bidding on, it bid to 194, um, was it two years ago now? And it sold for over 400,000. <laughs> Same car, nothing different was done. You can see it has it has the wrong wheels on it, which isn't a big deal. You can get those black interior. Um, really bad marketing job, but actually, from what my friend says, a really solid car. So how did I find my car? Well, kind of interesting. I found my car on Instagram, if you can believe that. Um, Interstate Motorsport, right? Yep, this is the right one. Um, is in New Jersey. All kinds of crazy cool cars, Lamborghinis. I don't know if that's my car or not. It might be. No, it's not. I don't. Oh, maybe. So anyway, I was on Instagram. I post a ton of stuff on Instagram. If you don't like my page, you should. It's amazing. Um, but I saw them post. I want to find the exact post here. Oh, is this it? 
Oh no, that's after I bought it. Gonna miss this one. Um, do 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 do. Is this it? Um, that's my car right there, but I'm trying to figure out. Anyway, um, they mentioned it was gonna go to bring a trailer. Yes, and that is how you have to back them up, and that is what I was doing. <laughs> oh, where is it? I still wanna I wanna find it. There it is again. So you can see it's all over Instagram, and I follow them, their page. I have for a while because they have lots of cool Lamborghinis. But anyway, they said they were, it was going to... Oh, is this the one? I can't remember. But I messaged them and said, Hey, I'm seriously looking for a Countach. I don't think they thought I was serious for a while. I kept messaging them. Then eventually I called them and said, Hey, you know, they had said they want to put this car and bring a trailer. They're going to auction it. And I said, Can I buy it beforehand? And we talked for a while, went back and forth. Eventually they said, yeah, for the right price, we'll sell it before it goes on. Bring a trailer. And I tried to get a price out of them. And they said, we think it's going to sell in the 400s on bring a trailer, at least. And I'm like, I think it's going to sell for more personally. But I didn't say that to them. Um, so I thought about it, um, came back and I said, how about, I think I offered them 400 even. And they said, no, won't even consider it. We need more than that. I'm like, well, you guys said you were looking for in the 400s. And they're like, yeah, but we think it'll sell for more. So we want more. We want 500 for it. I thought, oh my gosh. So I tried negotiating again. I tried using, um, hey, I can talk about you guys on my social media and promote you guys, which I'm doing right now. And they would not come off 500,000 for the car. Um, and I looked at all these other sales, everything else going on, different auctions, every car is selling for more than that. So that's what I ended up paying for it. I ended up paying 500,000 for it, but I was able to do a PPI pre-purchase inspection, had a friend of a friend go out, check out the car, look it over. The only issues were the old tires and um, some real small minor thing in the suspension. And the rest of it was in just amazing shape. We could drive it, see it worked. So I would much rather buy a car this way than on an auction where you can't drive it. You can't do an inspection. You're just really hoping <laughs> it's good. And I was able to get it for less than I think what it would have sold for at those auctions. And so um, I think I got a really good deal, made me pretty happy. And um, it has a really nice place next to my blue Diablo in the garage, so it won't be lonely. Um, and yeah, pretty excited about it. I also had time to work out um, financing and getting that figured out because I didn't want to spend just $500,000 in cash on the car because I can use that money to make so much more in real estate, flipping houses, buying rentals, whatever. Um, I'm a big fan of leverage and smart leverage. Still, you know, you need to have plenty of reserves, plenty of cash available. But if I can take, I didn't get a loan for 500000 I had to put quite a bit down. But let's say it's $400,000. Um, I can use that $400,000 to make way more than interest payment or interest, you know, percent on the loan. So I can put that money to work, make much more using that in real estate than I could just paying cash for the car. So ironically, after I did my refinance earlier this year, and I have a video on that that talks about it, refinancing nine properties, the bank wanted me to pay off all of my cars. Um, and as soon as I did that, I went and got a new loan on a new car. So I no longer have all my cars paid off. Um, I do have a loan on this one, paid 500,000 for it. I know that's a lot of money. It's so much more than I wanted to pay for it. I was hoping I could get it for less, but after buying it and seeing the market in other cars, I think it was a really good price and they're not making more of these, you know, they're an iconic car, absolutely amazing vehicles for the time, you know, it's really hard to beat them and um, they're probably, they're just going to keep going up in value. Not, not probably pretty much everybody um, in the car world thinks they're just going to keep going up in value because they're so rare and they're starting to really get the appreciation of being unlike any other car um, ever made in the history of the world, pretty much. And there's that, I think that's that anniversary that sold for 700 and some thousand. So that's how much I paid. I love the car. It's amazing. It has lots of quirkiness. Pretty much everything they say about it on YouTube videos is true. And I'm okay with it. I'll have a video on that that goes over the quirkiness, the different things, the good, the bad, and um, why I'm okay with all that and why I think it just makes it an even more amazing car. And I'll also talk about the story, which I should say a little bit now because I said the car used to be white. It was repainted red. It was actually stolen at one time. And it has a salvage title because of that. So a lot of people would say, oh my God, you bought a $500,000 car with a salvage title. And I would say, yes, I did. 
But because of the story, because of it being stolen and the different things that went on with it, and because of the Countach, it really doesn't hurt the value that much. And I talked to a lot of different people about the car, Countach experts, um, even the president of Lamborghini Club of America, and they're all like, it doesn't matter. Like, it really doesn't hurt value. And um, quite a few of those people I talked to are like, if you don't buy that car, I will buy it. So that helped me push along <laughs> the process too of getting it because I knew there were multiple people in line to buy that car if I didn't buy it just because I think it was a, a, a decent deal. So I think the seller's happy, I'm happy, and um, I'm very, very happy. We'll have many more videos on the car, driving, talking about it. And um, yeah, so if you haven't subscribed yet, now's a good time to do so. Don't worry, we still have plenty of real estate videos too coming up on different properties. I'm buying two properties next week, a three unit, and then a 13,000 square foot industrial property. And um, yeah, real estate has been pretty amazing to allow me to do these things. And I'm very thankful for that. And um, I think I'm good buying cars for a little while now. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how all that goes. All right. Take care. We'll be back soon. And um, hope you have a great start to your summer.